Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. My voice is still raspy like no other, man. It's your boy Loco coming in from that Mile High City. That's Denver, Colorado, the Box State, the place I call home right now. We got on the fucking phone. One of you want to call legends. One of them call one of the people out here that have been grinding since day one in this hip-hop, R&B, entertainment, goddamn game. Rob B, what's going on, brother? What up, what up, brother? I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, like I say, this motherfucker real shit. From back in the day when I could remember, he was been involved in in the radio for your local artists out here, man. Been grinding for your artists out here, but has like I say from the west, but has that east coast vibe, and always been in this fucking this this entertainment game, brother. And the uh, my cast don't know that. What's going on with you? Yeah, not a whole lot, man. Just always trying to stay active. You feel me? Um, uh, yeah, man. I, I definitely take that that uh. That title, so to say. I remember back in the in the high school days, all the homies would be in the in the Chris Dickies and the Nike <laughs> Cortez, but I'll be the dude in the fucking the the, the Nautica jacket and the, the yeah. Timberlands and shit. So I just always, I don't know. I just always. I mean, I love I love all hip hop, man. But I just kind of fell in love with the the I don't know the vocabulary or the intellect of the of the East Coast fucking artists, so especially in, in our era, you know what I'm saying? The yeah. fans were real nice, so. Yeah, he, he, yeah. we call it Pretty Boy Swag, that's what we would call it. Nah, but that's the thing. Definitely you, always you, just fucking, yeah. always like the thing. So, yeah, just no, staying busy, man. And that, that's How things go? How's this go, man? It's just, I like the, what you got going on with hey, this. Man, uh, I, I say, I learned from the people before me. You know what I'm saying? I give props and props to do. You got, like, it just takes me back to the old live wire days and shit, brother. You know what? Uh, oh, yeah. I just had a chance that fell into my hands while I was working with Blaze 98.5 and uh, FM up in Springs. But, you know, it was bitch going back and forth and shit. So, you know, this is how we ended up to roll with us and we. Just kind of just just kind of been going on for over about a year and a half now, man. So you know, nice, nice. it's kind of crazy, man. But yeah, we got our people, we got the listeners, and we got that following starting to pick up. But it reminds oh, me of the yeah. shit that y'all used to do, man. Like I say, um, I got to give props, props to do, and that's what it is. It's the just nowadays, it's a lot. This podcasting stuff is a lot more bigger, man. It's a lot more bigger. It's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's more than radio. Yeah, there's a lot more people who are in tune with it these days. A lot more, uh, it's a bigger audience. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cause I, man, like I remember, shit, I'm like, real, real top. We weren't even on the internet that much. We were MySpace, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. This, this newer generation, each generation coming up behind us, they, they are, you know, they were born with the internet, so they, that's all they do. <laughs> they know that shit. They made me on the internet. They were, that's how you about the latest sites before the sites are even up. You're tough, you're tough. <laughs> yeah, I got this. I have to stress on this track, man. Um, you got a chance to work with Royce the Five Nine and, and do a track with with Royce the Five Nine. Um, what's, the, what's the name of that track? I, I really. Oh. It's called We Get High. Yeah, We Get High. <laughs> Brother, that right there. That that's that's the world in this song. That's a motion picture song. That motherfucker right there is really one of my top five songs that I could say coming out of this motherfucking stadium. And, and, and that shit's a banger, brother, especially at the time. Like, what makes yeah, you yeah. feel like Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I do appreciate that shit. I was such a, I was just, at the time, I was really active. And uh, I had a, a, another business partner of mine who was actually doing some writing for a publication, a local publication. It's, it's not a no longer print it no more, but he was writing. <laughs> he was writing for the for the. I forget what it was called, but it's similar to like the Westward, but not on the biggest scale. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he, he he had the plug. He had the link. He was like, "Look, I could get this done." And I was like, "Yup, I'm on. I'm on. Sign me up." Um, I didn't get the chance to to meet him in person. It was all phone conversations and uh, faxing contracts back and forth and shit like that. But. Mm-hmm. He was very, very uh, humble dude and really good to work with, man. I definitely was uh, appreciative of how he handled business, real professional. That's a banging ass track. If I suggest anything, bro, I suggest you bring that back and we hit promo on that bitch like a motherfucker. You, you, know, you, you know what I've been trying to do, man, is I've been trying to get a hold of the the producer of that record to find me the stems or the session of that fucking record because I feel as though I could remix it. And, and, you know, 
bring it, bring it, uh, make it relevant again. I mean, it's a dope record still, you know what I mean? I still play it and all, but it, the the production obviously is definitely dated in comparison, yeah. but I still feel like Royce did his thing, so I feel like if I could remix it, you know, who knows? Yeah, you guys gotta check that out, man. That's that, that I ain't, man, what, what's that album called? That was off the Mon- Mr. Moneybags album. Mr. Moneybags, that's right, that's right. Mr. Moneybags. You guys gotta put, check that out. Like every fucking song is kind of like it. I didn't when I heard the album. You know, see, I think a lot of people don't don't think local be listening to their albums or listening to the fucking music and shit like that. But I got to, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm a fucking fan of this shit. And, uh, yeah. and like it's so many diverse like your angles on that shit. Cause I'm used to the BHG shit, you know what I'm saying? But when I heard, when I heard this Mr. Moneybag shit, this was you. Yeah, this was you. You know what I'm saying? This was yeah. this was you. And it was yeah. it definitely took you on a. Uh, on a whole different uh, mind state, um, uh, different mind state from what uh, we were originally seeing you with the BHGs and stuff. And that was, yeah. uh, was kind of like your breakout album, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, I did, I was able, I had uh, some more creative freedom and did more things with Triple V. When me and Triple V did the Clockwork Project, Clockwork, we, yeah. had, we, we broke out from, you know, that same style too. But yeah, I, I think, you know, when I did my solo one, the whole creative process was all me, so it definitely, you know, opened up. Uh, I, I guess it kind of showcased my versatility, because to me, that's what I take pride in being from Denver, is we don't necessarily have a go-to or a style that's signature to us. Right. So I just try to make my projects bang on every section of the fucking United States, you know I mean? I try to give them one, one full map, all that, you know, so... And that's that's just that's the, that's the truth of you know everybody says we have a style well, that's that's Denver style really we don't really have us we're we're so open out here with this music that we don't have this original style you know yeah yeah so everything like, bad things everything bad and good you know but sure it's, it's, it's open minded man you, you make it your style yeah yeah if you could if you execute it right and you do shit you know genuine you ain't trying to like front or pose you know put together a nice project because like I said that. it's what was this? Back in 95, 96, somewhere around this, guys. This was, this was where, on some real shit, we were still vibing in the hood type of shit, but we had the privileges and chances to work with Spice One, the Killer Tays, and, and the, the Zigzags, and all these cats when they came out here to Colorado, you know, and to Denver especially. And I, at the time, I didn't see the opportunity of what I was supposed to be in this game because... I was out there th- mm-hmm. dumb, dunking it, dumbing it up with my with my head up my ass as a youngster. That my peoples were, were rapping, my peoples were all rapping and doing this shit back in the day. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see this what I would be right now doing when I should have fucking seen it. You know, because you guys did have this fuck like, between the Black Nine, between the the BHGs, the Black Opossums, like where you guys were up there in the, like the originals, the the morning stars. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, crazy, yeah. Bro. The sick and twisted, the sick and twisted label. Yeah. If, if you go back, that shit was like a a Hall of Fame fucking mm-hmm. label, really. Like everybody dissipated and went their own routes, but the original roster that sick and twisted was team. Yeah, it was off the chain. I ain't gonna lie, yeah. that was off the chain. And if you're out right here in Colorado and follow the Denver music, man, you definitely know who sick and twisted was because the fucking songs were off the fucking chain. You know, it was, yeah. it was before its time. I could say that definitely. Yes, sir. Damn. <laughs> damn. I, I, I took myself in ass. I was talking with Doe and and and, and, uh, and and Ray Ray and shit. I told everybody, man, if I would have known what I knew now, you know, fuck, man, like shit. Who man. knows what level we could have got to at a sooner time and yeah. shit. Yeah, you know, it's just. Yeah, I bought my. But you know what? You know what, though, man? You're here now. You started. When we fucking started messing around at Arriba and get that shit going, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you got in it. That's the main thing. That's just it, too. Yeah, we were we adventured into the world. This is when Robbie. Robbie, see, I, they Robbie been in the game for a minute. When I first started promoting, I was working at Beta Nightclub, and I just stopped working out there because they were, it wasn't for me. I ventured into the nightclub with my people. They had they had Club Arriba on Sixth and Shaded, which took place of one of the biggest shows that I could say in, in, in Denver that was ran by some Denver people in, on single de Mayo, Waka Flocka for the first time in Denver, Colorado. Shut the shit down. Seventeen hundred plus people. Shut the shit down on single de Mayo. God damn it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. 
a Thursday, we took reggae on the roof crowd. Who, <laughs> reggae on the roof was like 10 years strong. They had that yeah. Thursday night locked. Not yeah. that night, not that Thursday. Yeah, it was, it was a good <laughs> event, man. A lot of cats, some cats do know about it, but a lot of cats don't. And that's what makes us uh, confident in what the fuck we do now. Like, you've been in the game for a minute. Who that been doing this shit for a minute, from the club promotion to the radio to doing songs to touring? Um, you really got your hands in front of a lot of shit. What do, you, what do you see the problem is out here, man? Well, like, like, uh, I think I think we're we're lacking like uh, like um, it's it's more like I feel like there should be more managers out here. There should be more more management of artists. There should probably be more uh, I don't know, like kind of behind the scenes people. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of people who want to be. You know, we're on the mic and in front of the cameras and shit, which is understandable. That's cool. Yeah. But I feel like there's not too much the people in the background. Yeah, yeah there's, there's not as much, and there's not as much corporate backing in in, in the scene. You know what I mean? Everything's yeah. like independent. There ain't nothing corporate about the Denver hip hop scene, which you know is great in its own right. But at the end of the day, to make it up to a, a certain mountain peak. It takes it takes money. It takes that commercial money as well, you yeah, know. So that's the thing too. And that's that building the brand shit, man. And that's you know that's that building the brand, you know. And then, and then a lot of artists too are, are kind of casual with their with their approach, you know. A lot I see a lot of artists that's not even like BMI registered, you know. They so they're sleeping on this money, and when you're indie, serious about you know pursuing this career. You don't sleep on no money. You taking every cent you can. And Thank you. Some of these guys are not. They're not BMI registered. They're not ASCAP registered. They, they just don't, they don't know. know the, the, they don't know any little play of your shit. You know, it's, they know. Gonna, it's gonna add up, man. Yeah, and there's no, there's no fundamentals. You know what I mean? Everybody goes straight from not doing rap at all to to being the most accomplished motherfucker they've ever heard in the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> and there's and it's not no reality to it, but that's kinda how they carry themselves, you know, they feel like, Oh, okay, I, I put out a song, uh, I made a video, okay, uh, yeah, yup, I'm the dude now, you know, and right. that's not how it works. You are basically you're skipping you're skipping a lot of parts and not actually doing it correctly, but then the ego doesn't allow them to absorb information or knowledge from guys like thing. you or myself. It's the ego, the ego, and that's what made me. Uh, I could say I swallow. I had to look in the mirror and swallow my fucking pride, which ain't a bad thing because look what made me do now. You know, it, yeah. it, 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 a lot of people won't let that shit ruin them. You know, their pride. Yeah, man. it's a good thing to have. But man, like I say, when the shit always stinks around you, something ain't right. You know, you gotta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta be, you, you gotta be realistic too, yeah. man. I mean. And it takes a real motherfucker. Believe me, I'm, I'm an old man already, but I only been th- just going into my, I'm about eleventh year now. You know, that's eleven years that I barely swallowed my pride and shit. You know, yeah. Like, Jesus, like Jesus, she was horrible. But um, but that's that's how you progress though too, and how you stay going. So yeah, you gotta realize, yeah, you gotta understand. That's the thing I didn't understand, especially for not being in the game. I was seeing it from, man, I hated to be in the studio because of you guys. Like, real shit, I never liked to be in the studio. It wasn't my shit. Like, I'm, I was doing my, my my own thing at the time, and these guys in the studio doing their shit. Like, I, I really thought you would never see me in the studio. So even with Glock 9s and, and, and the, my homeboys doing their thing, like, that's, I, I was just wasn't my shit. It's kind of crazy how now I'm so involved in this shit because really, like, I fucking kicked myself in the ass that I didn't see this opportunity back then. You know, when, yeah, I, when yeah. I know it's, the, the thing is, I know it's still going to be possible now because what I was trying to, I was going to tell you here later, but I've been talking with everybody. I don't know we all kind of old and everybody's doing their own goddamn thing, but I want you, BHGs and Mr. Uh, Upset Records, Glock 9, to actually do a fucking remake or remix album of some of their classic songs and we put it out. And I know, I know, I know by all faith to God that it's going to do a lot of shit. Especially yeah. now, you know what I'm saying? Because back then we yeah. did do a lot of shit. People know the songs that you guys were performing before we even knew about this game, really. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Units were pressed up before we even knew what units were. You know <laughs> Master, Master yeah. God, Godfather P over there had units pressed up, you know? And, and, and that was the lock and key right there. You don't get inside those things unless you have that money. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> there's no free samples around here. Guys, no, no. You got to pay for them CDs. And that's the thing. Yeah. It, just, it just makes a lot. Now, I, I know we could do some shit. I know we could do some numbers, demo. And um, be, oh, yeah. I, I, and I, I know I'm going to need some assistance on doing it because I really don't know. It ain't my, 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 my thing, but I know I could push the fuck out of it. And I know it'll do some numbers. And then these cats will understand how it will be was when we were growing up and see how it is now when we put all shit to side. Because not only do we know each other and we are doing shit, like these are different um, hoods out here. Different OGs uh-huh. getting together and, and colliding, bro. And I think that's what yeah. we got to do as us being who we are now is we got we to gotta get back to these streets. You know? Oh, yeah. I like that concept, man. I'm definitely on board and all behind that. So you keep me up, updated on that one. Yeah, that's, I that's a good idea. Because I know, like, all the bullshit aside, like, we all know what we done did. Guys, if you were in our era, this is when, this is like, people were actually getting attention to, to, to be a rap ho trues. They were getting attention. You know, uh-huh. like, a lot of artists out here was getting, uh, were getting that national attention because we were popping. There was that local support. Even if we were talking yeah. shit or bashing somebody, so many people talk shit about rap ho trues. Those motherfuckers got so much fucking fame and, and, and acknowledgement from that. You know, they were like, fucking talk shit about us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit. They came out of nowhere sounding like Bone Thugs and Harmony. But they're getting national, you know, national play. Uh, uh, Pure Devotion, first song on the radio. You know what I'm saying? When I wrote Stro Fed Throw, that shit was banging back then. Hey, Kelly, Kid G, shout out to Kid G, Pure Devotion. You know, like, we could go on and on and on. But, Robbie, man, thank you for calling. I want you to talk about what you got coming up. I know you got a tour that you just said, uh, the 7th. Yeah, my, my seventh national tour, bro. Seven, it's the seventh seven time, I'm, seven time I'm hitting the road. Um, my sixth one just ended, bro. That was my first time headlining. I just went out and did a uh, one-week run as a headliner. Did good. And uh, in March, we're going uh, south by southwest and all of the fucking western states and cities, man. Uh, being that it is my seventh tour, I'm starting to get my little niche going. I'm getting hitting spots that I've been to two or three times. So it's just mm-hmm. always evolving and growing, man. And that's... All I can do is keep, as long as I see growth and progress, I'll keep doing this fucking music shit. All right, it ain't easy, best believe it. Where can you find some of your music and everything yet, brother, man? I'm on everything, man. I'm distributed through DistroKid, so you can find me anywhere. iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, um, you name it, man. Everything's under Raw B Money, though. I had to switch, I had to add the money on the back just because the name started getting a little common, so <laughs> Raw B Money, Raw B Money on everything, man, Spotify, <laughs> iTunes, all that good shit. Yes, it makes a difference too, believe me, believe me, that's, <laughs> hey, I was New Age Entertainment, before you know it, it's 5280, 5280, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you got to make that shit pop, and I appreciate you taking the time. Bam, I want to invite you to come out um, this weekend also for my birthday party with MC8 at Bar Red. I got you on my guest list, plus one. Or let me know what you need, and I got you. Um, it's just Saturday night, right? Yes, sir. The 26th, Bar Red, or is it Red Bar? Bar Red. Bar <laughs> Red, or Red? I call it both, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I do call them both. I appreciate it, brother, man. Uh, we'll get back with you. We'll set up another interview with, and, and have some of your music spending and all that shit. And uh, we'll get more into this motherfucking uh, this politics, man. For sure, my bro. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Everybody, keep it locked, man. Roll with us radio. You know what it is. Shout out to Loco, man. Appreciate it, brother. The Tati Bell. You ever notice how it's quiet when the snow falling? Somehow, yeah, I hear the money calling. My attitude and altitude is so high. Why? I'm in a CEO state of mind. You ever notice how it's quiet when the snow falling? Somehow, yeah, I hear the money calling. My attitude and altitude is so high. Why? I'm in a CEO state of mind. Cocaine's out of all time high. Hustling is my full time job. These niggas on the block gonna shoot and kill for the pie. But bodies on the 40 cal ain't no white lies. They stay stacking, stay grinding, and they stay blowing. It's that Colorado cush, so it stay snowing. In the club popping pills, so they stay rolling. Pulling up in the big body, know it's boring. Ugh, just smash the club. Me and my niggas don't need your love. All these bad bitches, you know what it was. Hit the after. Party hit the telly, then cut. You ever notice how it's quiet when the snow falling? Somehow, yeah, I hear the money calling. My attitude and altitude is so high. Why? I'm in a CEO state of mind. You ever notice how it's quiet?
outside when the snow falling. Somehow, yeah, I hear the money calling. My attitude and altitude is so high. Why? I'm in the CEO state of mind. I love my state and I love my city. If you feel the same, yeah, stand up with me. Look, shouts out to the nigga Nike Nitty. A rapper hold truths, all the homies are the city. My CR fitted had us cocked to the left. I'm a rapping homie till I take my last breath. Orange and blue, I bleed through my chest. Wouldn't live nowhere else, so I'm blessed. Cruising down Colfax, headed to the west. Step on Bubba Chino's homie, yeah, they the best. All about my money, nothing more, nothing less. After Pepsi Center, Denver Nuggets for a press. After two Super Bowls, the city was a mess. Still rockin' Elway, Jersey, I'm fresh. And we gonna eat till there ain't nothing left. Pay Manny, get a ring, yeah, we the best. You ever notice how it's quiet when the snow falling? Somehow, yeah, I hear the money calling. My attitude and altitude is so high. Why? I'm in a CEO state of mind. You ever notice how it's quiet when the snow falling? Somehow, yeah, I hear the money calling. My attitude and altitude is so high. Why? I'm in a CEO state of mind. We out this motherfucker. Make sure you guys tune in. We gonna be switching up the times. We gonna be switching up a lot of stuff over here. Shouts out to everybody that rocked with us. Like I said, we can't do this shit without you, y'all.